Hey y'all, what's up? Okay, so your girl just became an affiliate for Kiara Lachey, teamlachey.com. Check down below in the description box where you can get waist trainers, booty bands, this cute little lavender yogurt fit that I had, guy. Okay, it was real cute. I've been working out in it, y'all. I'm getting my life to Kiara Lachey, but I'm also getting my life to this ISO T. Y'all can play around if y'all want to, but it has definitely helped me see results in my workout. Definitely drop some water away. Definitely been cleaning out my colon and such. Okay, get your colon clean. All right, y'all. Links to everything down below. Team Lachey, TLCT. Get that ISO T in your life, okay? Oh, and also, don't forget about Omiyage. Get you some. Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Bondi Blue and I am back for another P-Valley review, y'all. The show is good, the show is good. I'm so glad that y'all have been enjoying it and that y'all have been watching since the YouTubers been putting y'all on. I'm loving it, okay? I'm loving it. First of all, <laughs> there is a lot of P going on in this show. I mean, I'm appreciative of it. Cause I can't tell you how over the years I've always felt some type of way about how it's okay to show women's bodies, but not men's. Child, I wonder why. Mm -hmm. Embarrassed, ain't you? Well, the episode starts off with Mercedes in Mississippi in the paradise room with a man tied up on a bed or, you know, they basically doing some dominatrix stuff with him. And there's also a master slavery type of, you know, play going on, sex play going on. I don't know what's going on, okay? All I know is Mercedes looked like she couldn't wait for it to be over and Mississippi looks like she's in her prime, okay? Autumn is outside the Paradise Room giving Miller from This Is Between Bitches. I'm sorry, y'all, but I always, I always sing it like that. Between Women on YouTube is one of my favorite web shows. But anyway, Dre Carpenter, who is Miller, is getting um, a lap dance from Autumn. And Autumn is peeping what's going on in the Paradise Room when Benny, a.k.a. Diamond, opens the door and then comes out. She sees that, you know, they're whipping him. Apparently, he likes to be whipped. With more money comes more kink. But it's a Friday night at P-Valley, y'all, and the girls are cleaning up, okay? When it opens up with a City Girl song, you know that it's some real money-making energy in the air at the strip club, okay? When the girl walked out with the big old fur on, and she took the fur off, and she threw the fur, and then she slung herself around the pole, I was like, that'll work! You know what I'm saying? Like, look, okay? The strippers give life, okay? Mississippi walks the man who was in the room with she and uh, Mercedes out, okay? She's walking him out and they run into Uncle Clifford. Uncle Clifford is dressed like Frida. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm not mad. I'm just pointing it out for visual. And he knows the guy. The guy's name is Corbin, okay? Corbin is light bright with Afro textured hair. So he is not passing, but very, very light. And Mississippi points out how that's a waste of yellow skin, that he's that light and not passing. And I'm so glad that Uncle Clifford looked at her and said, girl, if you don't get your color struck ass away from me with this, I was like, I'm so glad he said something because I was like, I wish y'all would stop equating light skin to attractiveness because that's not the truth, okay? Like, I'm gonna just tell y'all right now, I know in some way Mercedes' character is supposed to be the more aggressive character between she and autumn or Haley, whatever you want to call her but i don't like autumn i don't like autumn i don't like her i don't know what has happened in her past in order to make her this unlikable but i definitely am going with my first mind that i really liked mercedes character and i like brandy as an actress as well so yeah i also feel like tyra pharrell could have played her mama but maybe tyra pharrell didn't want to play a crazy church lady but i feel like tyra pharrell and brandy look alike if y'all tyra pharrell was the mama from boys in the hood okay to give y'all some you know facial recognition that somebody mentioned that in my dms and i was like you ain't never lied tyra, tyra pharrell could have definitely played her mama 
So Uncle Clifford sees Autumn coming from her lap dance with Miller and asks her for her ID. She's been working there for, what, a week now, and she still hasn't shown him a valid ID, and he says he needs to see an ID so that he can file paperwork on her because one of the rules is that they don't do tax evasion. And she says, since when does a brothel need paperwork on its hoes? And he says, oh, uh-uh. Contrary to popular belief, there ain't a hoe in this house, okay? Autumn says, oh, so what was Mercedes and Keyshawn doing in the paradise room? And he said, girl, let me tell you something. Only people that's been here a Mississippi minute know what's going on in the Paradise Room. And without an ID, you ain't going to be here for another second, okay? She had a whole bunch of attitude for somebody who we can just call the fucking police on and find out what's really hood with them. I just like, oh, her attitude, y'all. I do not like her attitude. Back in the dressing room, y'all know they got the bathroom stalls in the dressing room. So one of the girls is in there blowing up the joint. Because whoever is in there cooking, making wings, the wings make everybody gassy, okay? So the girl blew up the, the room and everybody is like, oh my God, get out of here, bitch. Like some incense in this end. Child, spray can't always help that. You be needing something to burn and I wanted to kill some of them smells. Autumn is running into the stall to change and they like, it's been a whole week, this bitch still changing in the stall. Like, what is that about? And we see in her little duffel bag, she got a pink lock and she got a little thing of alcohol. I don't know what's going on with her, but the girl is an alcoholic. And we see on the other side of the stall, they got two girls in there making out. And I was just like. <laughs> mm. Outside the club, the Mexicans are fighting. And Big L and Uncle Clifford are in his office talking about how the Mexicans ain't about to help them get this money any quicker. Okay. Uncle Clifford got all this debt and they're about to lose the club if they don't find a way to come up with $55,000 in 30 days. Once again, Uncle Clifford is telling Big L to just count the money and don't worry about it because they got a car wash coming up and a car wash is supposed to bring in some, some money. I'm like, child, I don't know how a car wash is going to bring in some money, but hopefully it'll at least put a, a dent in $55,000. So Uncle Clifford goes to smoke a cigarette in his car and put another one of those past due bills in his glove box when he notices that little murder who he has started to call little nigga is in the backseat of his car. And he's scared he's going to kill him. He like, oh, Lord, please don't let me go like this. He was like, boy, ain't nobody about to put no lead in you. I'm here because I gave you all that money and you said Mercedes was going to play my song. Now, you supposed to be in charge of the girls. Shout out the Q, okay? And it don't seem like you in charge of the girls. And Uncle Clifford was like, every bitch got a choice, okay? And if she don't want to shake her ass to your slaw music, then she ain't got to. That's what he was calling it, slaw. And I'm guessing that means slow, <laughs> like, you know, not fast enough, not good enough, like coleslaw, because, you know, we don't really be eating coleslaw like that. So, look, I don't know, but I know what it meant when he said it. Lil Murder says that he tried to give Uncle Clifford a choice, but he didn't want the D. Probably couldn't take it anyway. And, child, Uncle Clifford is sitting up there. You know what I'm Like, he want that in so bad. He wanted. I wonder why he ain't take it yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to understand something. He said, you need to stop flexing. It ain't that big. And he was like, oh, it's big. And then he took his cigarette and got out the car. And I'm just like, oh, you took his cigarette and you gonna smoke his cigarette after he finished smoking his cigarette? That's, that's intimate. Y'all, I don't know what's gonna happen between Lil Murda and Uncle Clifford, but I'm excited about it. <laughs> like, I don't know why, but I want this for him. Even though Lil Murda is terrible. But for some reason, I want this for him. So y'all, Mercedes is running with her beautiful dog through the hood, okay? With superhuman power strength, like just running like it ain't nothing. I was just like, girl, you better do it. Okay, you better do it with her natural hair. I was like, yes. Okay, look, here for it all, all right? But she running through the neighborhood. It's a whole bunch of dilapidated houses and, you know, businesses that ain't gone out of business and all that. Y'all know how a lot of the southern uh, black neighborhoods can be. It's rather depressing, okay? But either way, I mean, it's not just the black ones. It's the white ones, too, that be like that. Small towns in general can sometimes not keep businesses afloat or not keep houses and the houses be dilapidated. Don't nobody do nothing with it. It is what it is. It's just on the street, boarded up, nice a crack house. Who knows? Either way, the neighborhood loves Mercedes and Mercedes loves the neighborhood. Okay. So she running back to her house 
And they got this big old fine, sexy man across the street with no shirt on in the ankle monitor. And she was like, oh, hey, what's up? <laughs> she walked, I didn't even see you was over there. And he was like, yeah, I heard you about to have, you know, your last dance. I'm going to be there, you know, in a club or whatever or something. Maybe it wasn't the last dance, but Friday, whatever. He said he was going to be there. Uh, the next time she was performing and she was like, how are you going to come and see me with that on your ankle? And he was like, I got a fat boy who needed a sandwich that's going to put it on for me. I was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> okay. Like, did we really need to know there's some fat boy out there that was just looking for a sandwich, just paying me for putting on your ankle monitor and possibly going to jail for, for committing some type of fraud with the ankle monitor child? I don't know. Okay, <laughs> I don't know what it's called, but all I know is I was just like, okay, <laughs> however you figure it out. You know, strong black man with all of this oiled up chest and everything. I was just like, okay. But Mercedes looked like she see it for him. Okay. He got an ankle monitor on, but she looked like that wasn't a deterrent. So she gets inside and her mom, Patrice, is calling her looking for the rest of her tides. She don't answer the phone. And one of the church secretaries comes in and say, Patrice, it's time for you to practice your solo. And she was like, don't you mean Sister Woodbine? And she was like... Like, girl, if you don't get out of here with this shit, Sister Woodbine, Patrice, if you don't bring your ass on in here and perform this song, girl. And then here come the pastor walking in. And the pastor is big enough, but the pastor is there to ask, where is Mercedes with the money that she's supposed to be giving them? And I'm like, so you mean to tell me you got this whole damn church entitled and expecting payments from this girl as if she owes y'all some damn money? I was just like, oh, Lord. And then you could see the mama is one of them thirsty for a man mamas, you know, especially if he wrapped up in a pulpit, you know, because he was like, oh, the way you sing, you don't need to be doing no offering. You need to be in that pulpit on Sunday. So you just make sure your daughter bring that money around and maybe we'll have to see about getting you to sing in that pulpit. And then he gets a, a little piece of feather off her eyelash. And I was just like, low down, dirty piece of shit. Using... Your position and your sexuality to game this woman to getting more money from her daughter. Apparently, she was supposed to give them money to put into a, an account so that they can get a loan. They haven't gotten the loan yet. So apparently, whatever amount of money she gave them, it was not enough, which tells me y'all didn't did something y'all weren't supposed to do with the money. But I was like, oh, this is a mess right here. Then we see Autumn waking up on her mattress. Her phone is still out. Y'all know she spilled liquor on her phone, so now she can't look at pictures of her little girl anymore. And she got the phone in a bag of rice, and it ain't dried out yet. Then we see her go down the street to a pay phone. Child, I didn't know they still had those. So she can call and try to see if the ID she has, if the person has been found dead. And I think they said the person was dead, Lakeisha, whatever her last name was, who she had the ID for. So it wasn't her ID, which means it wasn't her clothes. It wasn't her luggage that was uh, in that water. I know a lot of y'all said that, but shit, how was I supposed to know that? Like, <laughs> who's just out here looking for luggage in swamp water? Y'all, then we see Andre Watkins. Andre Watkins is looking through the pictures that he was taking outside P-Valley last week, including... Pictures of some people throwing up outside the club and pictures he took of Autumn. It's very creepy, okay? But once he, you know, minimizes all of that, we see plans for a Promised Land Casino. So apparently, he works for a Promised Land Casino. There are these two rich white boys <clears throat> who live on a cotton field. And he goes out there and he's taking a picture of the cotton field. And one of the white boys tells him he should pick some. Whenever people come, they like to pick some as a souvenir. Telling a black man to pick cotton. I swear to God. I was just like, oh my God. But either way, he asked them for their signature for the sale of their land to the casino so they can build this casino on this land that the brothers own. However, there is a third brother named Corbin. Okay, Corbin was the guy who was at the club with Mercedes in Mississippi getting whipped. Okay, apparently he's an illegitimate child, but when the daddy passed away, he left them equal shares. So they have a share in the property. Corbin wants to lease it so he can make more money over time versus selling out for what? Three million, one million a piece to, you know, the brothers. So because he didn't show up to give his signature, Andre suggests that maybe he can go and talk to Corbin and because he's somebody impartial, convince him to sign the sale. We'll see. The brother said he can go ahead and give it a try. 
I'm like, child, they just as dumb as they want to be. Mercedes meets up with all of her dancers outside of a building. And they're like, what's going on? I know we ain't about to practice outside. It is too hot out here. <laughs> and she was like, no, we're not about to practice out here. Let me make this quick. In a week, we will be in this gym, y'all. This will be the home of the, you know, Karachalisa or whatever the name, <laughs> the challengers, whatever the name of the city is. Their little dance group is going to be at this building that Mercedes has now leased. And while they're all standing out there rejoicing, some boys in a car roll past talking about shake that booty and all of that. So she chases them off. And one of the mamas was like, this gym couldn't come soon enough. They need to get their children from the out and open while all of these sleazy ass men are circling in around their kids. So they have the soak down, y'all. That's the car wash. And the mayor comes, y'all. We finally get to meet the mayor that doesn't want the strippers and the liquor in the same place. He feels like if they want to sell liquor at P Valley, then they need to cover up. And it's like, well, what the fuck is a strip club? What are you talking about? Child, do not understand people like this. I don't know why you will create an issue like this. Like, that's just stupid. Especially when Isaiah Washington, the mayor with his gold fronts, shows up to the car wash to get his car cleaned and tell Clifford, how he better just get in line and follow his rules before he calls the sheriff down there and they start kicking in doors to see what the hell is going on up in here, okay? And Uncle Clifford was like, all right, fine. And then he tells Mercedes and Autumn, they better wash this damn car as clean as they can get it, you know? So Autumn and Mercedes get in the, in the car to clean it and Mercedes asks for the leather cleaner and Autumn is like, I ran out. Cause you know, she drunk and got a stank ass attitude, right? So Mercedes gets out of the car to go and get more. Well, while she's in there, she, you know, seeing the water falling over the car as they're washing the car from the outside, she starts to panic. We see these flashbacks of her trying to get out of the car. And when she was trying to get out of the car, you know, in real life, the door was locked. So she jumps out of the sunroof of the car, not a mayor all mad and expecting for the wash to be free. I'm just like this. OK, but either way, she's flipping out, making a scene and she blames Mercedes for locking her in. And Mercedes said, I ain't do nothing to her. OK, and Mississippi opens the door and she was like, the child lock was on. And Uncle Clifford is like, Mercedes, take her home. And Autumn was like, no. And she was like, no, Mercedes is going to take you home. And so Mercedes gets her in the car, takes her home and she just thumps out of the car without saying thank you, without saying anything. And Mercedes follows her up the stairs and she tries to close the door on her. And she was like, damn, bitch, you ain't even going to offer a bitch some red drink. And she was like, I don't do Kool-Aid. And she closed the door and she was like, apparently you don't do curtains neither, bitch. And she walks off. Of course, she's going to go back to the club and tell everybody how high, yellow, high and mighty, you know, ain't got nothing but a mattress and newspapers on her window. So yeah. So Autumn wakes up at like 3.45 in the morning to see that her phone is back on and she looks through the pictures of her daughter and she gets to a picture of her with a man and he has his arm over her shoulder and she looks scared in her eyes. She's smiling, but she don't look healthy. You know what I'm saying? You know, it is something in that picture that we saw. But she gets up and she goes down to the laundry room slash computer room so that she can transfer $9,000 to someone named Lakeisha. And that's the person whose identity she's going to take. I don't know where the $9,000 came from. I'm so confused. We obviously know that Autumn is smarter than she lets on, okay? She obviously comes from somewhere knowing something in order to get to this place where she is right now. I don't know what's going on with her, but it's obvious that she's running and hiding from somebody. Mercedes gets back to the club to tell Gidget in Mississippi how Autumn is living in squalor when they see Uncle Clifford arguing back and forth with the cook. The cook is leaving with his pots because he didn't get a raise. We all know Uncle Clifford don't have the money to give nobody a damn raise, okay? So now he didn't lost the cook. Now what he gonna do, okay? He's stressed out. You just gonna leave me here to deal with this by myself, okay? And Mercedes said, hey, rule 24.5. Ain't no crying at the P. Had to remind Uncle Clifford of all his rules. Throughout the episode, we've been hearing about all of these rules that Uncle Clifford has. 
So he pulls himself together and him and Big L go in the kitchen to start cooking wings for the night, okay? And this is when Lil Murder comes in. Lil Murder got a new song. It's still slow, it still ain't good enough. Lil Murder does not like hearing that. So Clifford tells him, you need to get used to hearing criticism if you're trying to, you know, get big, if you're trying to get on. You need to, you know, be okay with hearing criticism. I'm like, it's so hard. <laughs> it's so hard. Lil Murder points out how P Valley doesn't have hookah, doesn't have a money gun, and the wings give everybody gas. His homeboys say one of the girls fought it on him last night. I was like, damn. <laughs> Oh, Lord. So that's when Lil Murder started giving tips on wings. He said, first of all, y'all need to pan fry it in order to suck in the juice and the moisture and the seasoning. And then you need to bake it in some weed butter to get these motherfuckers high and get them starting to spend their money. I was like, child, if that wasn't a word, okay? So Uncle Clifford said, all right, learn me, youngster. And he does. He in there cooking and cutting up weed and, and everything and making the wings with the weed butter on them hoes look good too. And it couldn't be made fast enough because people out there looking for their damn wings. Andre and Corbin are in a private room and Corbin is getting a lap dance and they talking business. And Corbin wants to lease and not sell that property like I told y'all. Autumn saw him while she was at the bar. So she goes in there and asks him if he wants a dance. Mercedes had already clocked them and was like, they in here to do business. I'm not about to go and bother them. But when she see Autumn go in there, she goes in behind Autumn and tries to steal Andre from Autumn. But Andre, you know, he got a thing for Autumn. So he tells Mercedes that he's going to go with the white liquor tonight instead of the brown. Okay, so Mercedes walks on out and now Autumn is giving them lap dances while they're discussing business and she ear hustling and hearing everything. And basically Corbin was offering a kickback to Andre in order for him to introduce him to the right people so that he can lease the land and make more money instead of selling it, okay? Andre doesn't really wanna do that. Corbin says, okay, but the mayor does more for less. Andre feels like they may be skin folks, but they ain't kin folks. It's obvious that Corbin is always trying to um, you know, find common ground with other black folks since he never fit in with his white family and his white daddy. So yeah, but Andre wasn't really feeling that. So Corbin says, you know, hey, Autumn, here's some money. Won't you take Andre to the champagne room? In the champagne room, you dance butt ass naked. So that's what she was doing. She was dancing, but he wasn't really feeling it. He was like, you need to sit over there. You know, they didn't been feeling the high of the wings and everything. So they're a little bit more loosey goosey than otherwise Andre probably would have been. And when Autumn realized that he wasn't really trying to get this lap dance, she's about to walk out, but he's like, hey, can we just start over? So she comes back and she's dancing in his face. And y'all, let's be very clear. Homegirl is white girl strip club dancing, okay? She is white girl strip club dancing, which is totally different from the way black girls dance at strip clubs, as you can see. Whenever you see these black girls out there, they are gymnastics throwing themselves around the pole. White girls is all of the... Like, that's the white girls, okay? I've been to both types of strip clubs in order to know. So she walks up to him and he sees her C-section scar. And he shows her the scar that he has on his chest. Apparently he was born with his heart outside of his chest. She asked him how that felt. And he says, I reckon like having a child. And she was like, time's up, Andre. That must've turned her off. The reminder of her children or for a man to compare something that he doesn't even remember. You know, if it happened to you when you were a baby, you don't even remember that. Don't compare that to me getting a baby cut out of my womb as an adult, but whatever. She's about to leave and she tells him, you know, you should build a shell corporation to protect yourself. Delaware has the best shell protections in the country. Give him a little hustle. And it's like, well, how do you know that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> how do you know that? Because of that, he ends up giving her the whole thousand dollars that Corbin was trying to give to him. So Uncle Cliff is outside smoking a cigarette, trying to gather his thoughts and figure out how he's going to save this business because Big L and everybody else's lives are hanging in the balance, okay? Mercedes comes out and she like, you know, I followed every one of your rules. I ain't never broke one. I even lived by the first one, which is let the stage be your stepping stone and not your tombstone, which is really great advice, okay? So she asked him, when you gonna tell the girls what's going on? And he was like, girl, get you and your third eye the hell away from me. And she was like, no, come on now. When you gonna tell everybody what's going on? 
how much money do you actually owe? And he was like $55,000. Now, of course, she don't have $55,000. But being the person that Mercedes is, she is going to try to help. So at cash out, Autumn comes in there flossing, handing $150, 15% of her stack to Uncle Clifford. And Mercedes was like, oh, what you slanging to get a stack in one night? And Autumn turns around and says, I know you not talking. And Mercedes was like, bitch, I ain't never had to bend my morals for not a nigga up in this club. Okay, scallywag. <laughs> you know, they get all in each other's face. And Big L, you know, pushes Mercedes out the way. And Big Clifford was, and Uncle Clifford was like, all right, y'all, get out of here. Y'all go catch y'all ride shares. And when they were all out the room, he tells Autumn, don't you ever do that again, bitch. Don't you ever come in here flossing like that, okay? Cheat me before you come in here letting all these girls know how much money you didn't made tonight, okay? She's about to walk out, and he looking for that ID he asked her about. She gives him the ID. He put on his glasses to look at it, and he was like, oh, you a Scorpio, huh? You got a birthday coming up in May. What kind of cake you like? And she was like, chocolate. And he was like, ain't no damn Scorpio was born in May. This ain't real. This fake. OK, now I'm trying to figure out how much you lying about. You lying about who you are and you lying about how you made that thousand dollars in one night. And she was like, I wasn't lying. I didn't do anything. I, you know, was ear hustling to them and they were talking about this casino. Corbin was trying to bribe Andre. Andre didn't want to take the money, so he gave it to me. It was just a lucky night. And so now you didn't perk the interest of Uncle Clifford about this casino because he didn't really know nothing about it. And she was like, you didn't know? It's like, why would he know? Like, the only reason you know is because you was clapping your ass in front of their face when they was talking about it. Otherwise, you wouldn't have known. Like, girl, stop. But either way, she was like, well, here's his car. You can go and ask him for yourself about the casino. And he was like, oh, uh-uh. He was like, I don't need to do that. I have someone that he wants to talk to. So you are going to get the information that I need. And she was like, you are not my pimp. And he was like, no, but I am your employer and I have a fake ID right here. Okay. <laughs> so I'll hold on to this until you get the information that I need. Mercedes gets home to her mama sitting on her porch looking for more money. And Mercedes tells her, I'm going to need that 20 stacks I gave you back. She was like, you mean to tell me you asking for your little booty change back? She was like, yeah, I want my change. All 20 stacks back. I held up my end of the bargain and you need to give me my money back. Like that. Okay, y'all don't mama stay on them damn bait pens. I think that Mercedes is asking for the $20,000 so that she can give it to Uncle Clifford. Then we see Andre, y'all. Andre is on the phone with his old lady. That's right. Andre has a whole ass old lady somewhere, okay, that he's on the phone with talking about building shelves and shit. When Autumn calls him and he clicks over when he hear who it is, it's Haley, you know. He clicks over with his old lady and hangs up the phone very quickly with her so that he can get on the phone with Autumn and have phone sex. Child, the way he skeeted on his chest. <laughs> Child, the way we saw that man hold meat when he was going to lay down in his bed to jack off on phone sex with her. I did not need, I mean, I, 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 I just didn't need the visual. But it was fine. I'm not mad about it, but I didn't need it. Either way, she's getting closer and closer to being able to get whatever information she needs to get out of him. And then we see Cliff going get in his car at the end of the night and when he pulls down the visor, a CD falls down and it's a CD from Lil Murder. And he was like, nigga, I ain't that old. <laughs> I was dying laughing. And that's the way the episode went on. But yeah, y'all, P Valley is really good. I'm enjoying it. I hope y'all are enjoying the reviews as much as I'm enjoying reviewing them. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. I love y'all and I'll see y'all next time.